winter solstice is the celebration of God's sun, literally the sun in the sky, or, or the soon say. And um, it has nothing to do with a historical figure or man. The reason why all of these ancient, or so many of these ancient deities, like Mithra was born on December 25th, Krishna has been suggested to... Um, Thanis, uh, many ancient uh, Addis, many ancient gods had their their uh, birthdays on on the winter solstice celebration, and some of them had their their birthdays, like the Persian god Mithra celebrated his birthday on the on the death of the sun, which is the twenty December twenty first, which is Saint Thomas's day now. But most of them celebrate it in, in the tradition of the birth of the sun on the twenty fifth, but. Uh, either way we look at it, it's still a solar tradition. Now, further from just the actual birth of the sun on December 25th, we have a lot of symbolism in the night sky, and actually the zodiac and the constellations are what were considered the gods and the deities and the, and the angels in the, in the heavens. And we have all of the Greek gods in the heavens. We have Asclepius and Zeus and... Orion and uh, Aquila, the the bird, and you know the animals and all of these different things. And these were all the ancient ancient gods that were quote unquote heavens. You know the the heavens were where the stars were located, heaven. And uh, so you know you, when you went to go live with the gods, you went to live with the stars, with the constellations. And in the in the morning of the of in the morning of uh, December 25th, or, or Christmas Eve on the 24th, what we have is uh, an alignment of the belt of Orion and the star Sirius. What happens is the belt of Orion is typically pointed at different angles during different times of the year, but on Christmas Eve it actually swings, or in the week before Christmas it actually starts swinging down, and then on Christmas Eve it points directly down uh, on the eastern horizon where the sun will rise on Christmas morning. So what we have is a, a great big finger that points down in the, in the sky where God's sun will be born on Christmas morning. The star Sirius is the star of, of Bethlehem, and then the, the, the belt of Orion are the three stars of the, the Magi. And this is where the ancient tradition comes from, and, and as, this, as the, the sun... Uh, follows these bright stars up the horizon. What actually happens in between that time is the is just before the sun rises on Christmas morning or is born again, the, uh, the sun falls between the constellation of Virgo, the the celestial virgin. The sun falls between Virgo's legs and is considered to be born again on Christmas morning. So this is where we have the the the. The, the entire event, uh, the the animals in the stable, those are the different constellations, and there's actually a constellation called the stable. And uh, so you have all the animals in the heavens, you have all of the, the the characters there, right there in the heavens, and this is something that we can go outside every single year and watch. So this isn't something that, you know, we're supposed to wait 2,000 years for the return of Jesus, the God-Man. This is something that literally happens every single year on December 25th, and we can all walk outside and, and be a part of it. And what happened was, at some point, the Church actually separated uh, December 25th with New Year's to, to make it appear that the, that the two were not associated. But in fact, Christmas Day is actually the New Year's celebration. That's the real... Uh, New Year's Day, the birth of the new sun. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we've got uh, the universe quite well uh, covered now. Uh, but one more question: I'm not certain about this, but is it is it, uh, it uh, this same period of time that uh, the Big Dipper uh, uh, goes around the polar star, and that's the only time of the year that it does so? Yeah, um, the Big Dipper was the chariot uh, of Odin, Odin's chariot pulled by the goats, and it can also be said to be uh, the, the sleigh pulled by Santa Claus's reindeer around the North Pole. And, um, you know, the, the Santa Claus and the reindeer come from the Siberian and Norse traditions of, um, of uh, 
the winter solstice. Mm. So, all right. If we move now uh, uh, to to the symbology of the Christmas, okay. Now we have uh, we've got the, the influences from the Christianity, from Coca Cola, from a lot of things. Uh, but what was the, this entire symbology? We know there's a lot of uh, Manita Muscarius involved in fairy tales, uh, which are told in this period of time on postcards. Uh, we've got this Christmas tree. Maybe we can start off with the Christmas tree. What it means? Well, the Christmas tree, uh, what it actually means is it's a symbol of the, the world tree or the, the axis mundi, which is basically the, 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 the pole axis or the, the north and south pole. It's a, it's a symbol of, of the world itself. And the, the tree, the evergreen, is a symbol of life that sustains itself through the, the darkest, coldest parts of winter. When most other things die, the evergreen stays green. That's why it's called an evergreen. Uh, that's the, the pine and the, the cedar trees, the fir trees, uh, etc., the birch. These are all evergreen trees, and uh, these trees were considered sacred and holy in ancient times, one, because they stayed green, and two, um, because of their tall, straight nature and, and the ancients' belief in fertility worship, they were considered a, a phallic fertility symbol. And uh, the, the tree is, as far as how we celebrate it in Christmas, what the ancient traditions of the Siberian and, and uh, uh, Norse shaman would do would be to go out into the woods and the in the autumn before the Christmas celebration and collect the mushrooms, and then they would hang the mushrooms on the trees in order to dr 